3CR. Joined by Spira Economopoulos from the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. Welcome to 3CR. Thank you for having me on. Watch a must-see film this year. I know it's an awesome program. Oh God! Look, I tell you what, uh, they're all good. But if I, if I, you know, I had a sort of sort of forced into an answer, I'd probably say um, the Strong Ones is a really great film, and I miss you. And two of us are three sort of hot tips that I would go. Don't forget to check them out. Gender diversity, there's heaps of great stuff on that. Tell us what your favourite, what your uh, recommendation is. You know, we've got a, actually a really great uh, movie from Argentina called Brief Stories from the Green Planet, which actually won the Teddy Award for Best Film last year. Teddy Award is one of the biggest queer awards uh, in the world uh, from Berlin. And the way I would describe this film is basically uh, E.T., but with a trans woman in the center of the story so it's about this woman who a uh, trans woman whose grandmother passes away and she is gifted her house and discovers that her grandmother was housing an alien all these years so it becomes this wonderful road movie where her and her friends are trying to get this alien back home so it's quite something it's very offbeat really lovely um but definitely worth a look a road movie meets sci-fi Who doesn't like that? That's fantastic. And that segues perfectly into uh, lesbian films. It wouldn't be a Melbourne Queer Film Festival without an awesome lineup of of, of, of lesbians. Tell us all about that. We have some wonderful movies this year. I mentioned uh, The Two of Us, which was one of my favourites, I think. Uh, It's this absolutely fantastic film from France and Belgium about uh, two elderly women who uh, secretly have been in a relationship for a long time, but to the, you know, on the outside and to their family, their, their widows, who, uh, who sort of husbands had passed away and they're basically sharing a top floor of an apartment but in actual fact they've been in this long-term relationship and uh, something happens that uh, sort of threatens to unravel their secret and so it's about how these two women try to stay together and it's like a really wonderful, wonderful drama uh, quite suspenseful at times even but it's, it's really fantastic I, I really adored this film And it sounds like you've really moved away from you know American films you've got much more of a European and other continents influence uh, Absolutely. You know, it's interesting this year, I would say this is probably the this year we've probably had the least films from North America. Um, and it's really interesting. I think a lot of, you know, I think a, a lot of really interesting queer films are coming out, coming out from countries actually where being gay is still illegal. And sometimes, uh, you know, I think that's sort of interesting how artists kind of react to those kind of things. And so the um, you're seeing some just really great queer cinema coming out of there. And, you know, the sort of Spanish language country is always kind of representing in a really amazing way as well. What about Africa? We have a really wonderful film called Walking with Shadows, actually, um, which is based on a really groundbreaking novel from 2005 about uh, a married man who uh, is basically being blackmailed by a past secret, which uh, basically it's revealed that he had a secret gay life, basically. And it's about him coming to terms with his sexuality, but also his wife kind of dealing with that fallout. Um, It's a really kind of beautifully made film, very empathetic, I think. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a really interesting movie. Anything from Greece or the Middle East? It's funny you should mention Greece, actually. Uh, we have a wonderful short, actually, which is playing in our Hooking Up program, which is a, a shorts package, a sort of male focus. And it's this really lovely film called The Distance Between Us and the Sky, which uh, I really recommend people checking out. What about visitors to the festival? Uh, Finn Grey Paul was out last year. Yeah. Who have you got this year? Well, we have uh, the director, actually, of that film, I Miss Shu, which uh, I mentioned before, which is a, a, a Bolivian film, uh, Rodrigo Bello, who's the director. This is actually based on his stage play. And what seemed really incredible about this film was that it, uh, when it was released as a play initially, then as a film in Bolivia, it just caused this dialogue there where it opened up a discussion about um, – homosexuality and mental health and uh, it's a really really powerful film and it's incredible the change that it caused within that kind of society and I think you know the film is wonderful I think it's really kind of emotional and really well made I'm a big fan of Mexican films anything from Mexico yes we have a great movie called this is not Berlin and actually this is a coming-of-age film set in the 80s so if you're a fan of the 80s this is even better as well and it's about a young man basically kind of coming out and coming of age in um, Mexico City in the 80s, sort of set amongst the kind of punk queer scene. Uh, it's really, really cool and, uh, you know, really interesting kind of-
kind of story, which I, I enjoyed quite a bit. It's got a lot of energy to it. and Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The punk scene in Mexico City in yes. the 80s. Tell us a bit more yeah, about that well, other it's, 80s child. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's like the kind of punk new wave, actually. And, of course, as you can imagine, uh, you know, that, that scene was kind of really sort of gender diverse. Even back then, we talk about gender diversity quite a bit now. But I think uh, when you look at, you know, even the 70s even, let's be honest, you know, when you think of kind of androgyny and, you know, things like that, that there's stuff that people have been exploring for a long time. So it's kind of interesting seeing it in, in a prison of that era, but also in a culture that sometimes people sort of see as being hyper-masculine or really conservative. And um, this is definitely sex, drugs and rock and roll in a big way. So it's a lot of fun. What about the 90s? Oh, what about the 90s? Uh, I'm sure we have something from the 90s. I'm just trying to call back now, actually. Well, you know what? Actually, speaking of the 90s, I think what's really great about the festival this year is that this is our 30th anniversary. So is we, it really? Yeah, so we started in the 90s. So I'll, I'll lead with that because I actually think uh, what's been amazing about our festival is that we really came out of uh, a – era in the 90s when queer cinema was really kind of coming into its own. We talk about the queer new wave and that was the 90s and this is where our festival kind of was really sort of born from and, you know, we're resting on the shoulders of people like Pedro Moldovar and Gus Van Sant and Todd Haynes and Cheryl Dunn and Rose Troche, incredible filmmakers and I think it's really exciting that we have sprung from that, I guess. I actually, thinking back, went to that very first festival in 1990 and there was a lot of controversy around a local film called Dykes of Our Restless Days. Um, so oh, Sounds great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> so you, you're bringing back lots of fond memories. But it was also, you know, it was an emerging time, wasn't it, for yes. queer cinema, but also a very depressing time with HIV AIDS and so many deaths. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, um, I think what's amazing also about uh, our festival too is that, you know, there's a real historical perspective to it too, in particular – um, thinking about that when I was programming, a lot of it was about looking forward and also looking back. And, you know, I think our opening night film, I think, is a testament to that uh, gay chorus, Deep South, as is uh, a really great documentary called The Archivettes and 5B, which are about an older generation of queers who were um, living in different times. And, you know, I think uh, that perspective is so relevant and current today even. And I think it's kind of really great that hopefully younger queers can sort of see as well. So who makes the decisions about which films make the cut? And which don't? Uh, me. <laughs> Mostly me. That's basically. a lot of power. Well, you know, there's a lot of responsibility, I guess. But, uh, you know, I feel uh, I feel like the festival's in good hands at this point. So, you know, no complaints so far. <laughs> Look, we've just, we all know the, the marriage equality saga. Uh, is there anything on queer divorce? Look, uh, there's definitely stuff about queer relationships going through very complicated times. And one film in particular called 15 Years uh, is an Israeli movie about a couple who who are in a long-term relationship and they're obviously celebrating their 15th anniversary. And one of their friends announces that they're um, actually going to have a baby. And uh, this causes, I guess, like a crisis in their relationship. And I think what's interesting about that film is that, uh, I guess, gay couples are thinking about that kind of stuff now. And they're the other sort of pressing issues about longevity, about starting families and yeah, marriage and divorce even. So these are things that we're kind of also inheriting as well. Any horror movies? I like the idea of gay well, horror. Got to say, horror is my my secret kind of you know favorite genre. So I am excited really? to. Oh, absolutely, it's my favorite, and uh, I'm very thrilled to say that we have a great movie called Spiral, which uh, I would describe as a gay get out. Uh, is probably the best way to describe it. And actually, that's exciting about that is we have the director coming out for that. So um, that's definitely worth checking out. And it's a really interesting film about a gay couple who kind of come into this small community with a, a very sinister secret, which I won't give away. And uh, a really wonderful documentary called Scream Queen, which is about the lead actor of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, which uh, people may or may not know was, uh, at the time when it came out, had an incredibly blatant queer... Well, it's not even a subtext. It's so obvious in that film. The actor that starred in that film at the time was closeted and uh, was also dealing with a partner who was HIV positive. And it's very much about someone struggling to come out at a time when there was so much, you know, I guess, hatred and also sort of prejudice against people with AIDS in Hollywood. And also about an actor who felt like his career was kind of really destroyed by a film that he, you know, 
apparently go, went into not knowing it had this queer subtext. So it's a really fascinating documentary. And, you know, even if you're not a fan of horror, I think it, there'll be a lot to enjoy in that. You must be watching like heaps of films every day to prepare for this festival and to kind of select films. You must mm. be constantly watching movies. Does watching the Friday 13th series count? I mean, like, <laughs> basically, I am watching a lot of films all the time. I mean, I'm a movie fanatic. I love movies so much. I've been, you know, going to, I've been going to this film festival for many years as well. And, you know, as a patron and, um, I, you know, this is like a dream job for me. So I'm quite happy to watch movies all the time. Have you ever been in a film? Yourself. I have made some films and I've probably unbeknowingly been in films. I don't know. Um, no, I don't think I've been in a film before. I'm just trying to think, actually. I've been on television. You mentioned documentaries. Tell us a little bit more about the documentary screening. Well, I mentioned very briefly the Archivettes, which is this absolutely wonderful doco about the Lesbian History Archive, which was formed in New York in the 70s. Yes, Joan Nessel. Joan Nessel, yes. And Joan Nessel is going to be introducing this session, How which is so awesome. thrilling. How awesome. Absolutely. She's Our most so downloaded great. podcast was an interview with Joan Nessel. Oh, I'm not surprised. She's really wonderful. And I'm so excited that she's going to be there. And the Lesbian History Archive is this wonderful document of lesbian history um, in uh, mostly, I think, America, but around the world that are stories that are personal, that are political, and very much, unlike, you know, like the queer community, you know, that personal is political, and I think it's wonderful that um, this thing exists. Give us the details for the festival so people can check it out. Okay, we start on March the 12th to 23rd, so that's next week. Uh, you can get tickets on uh, from our website at www.mqff.com.au or you can download the app and uh, you know book all your films in there. It's a good way to do it. Awesome stuff. Spiro, thanks for joining us so much on 3CR. Thank you so much. That was great.